Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and if you've been following our content for a while, you know that we've made plenty of videos talking about different ways you can watch all of your favorite movies and TV shows in your home entertainment setup using plenty of different kinds of streaming boxes and NAS devices to store and organize your media collection. Setting these things up can get pretty expensive though, and dedicated NAS units especially can easily cost over $1,000 before you even consider buying any actual hard drives. So that's why today we wanted to take a look at a relatively affordable alternative from a company called TerraMaster. This is their F4223 model NAS, which has some features that really make it stand out considering its low price point. So if you're interested in how easy it might be to add some affordable mass storage to your home network, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, today we're going to be taking a look at this TerraMaster F4223, which is their newest 2023 model of 4-bay NAS. And for those of you that aren't familiar, a NAS is essentially a storage device that connects to your home network, allowing multiple devices in your house to share the same data. If you haven't seen our guide on how to rip 4K Blu-ray movies using Make MKV, go ahead and check that out. I'll leave the link in the description. This kind of a NAS gives you a really convenient place to store those full quality rips of your Blu-ray movies and TV shows. And unlike a computer, it's meant to run 24 seven without being shut off. So you'll always have access to those movies and TV shows. The F4223 comes packed with a dual core Intel Celeron N4505 CPU running at 2.9 gigahertz, which should offer plenty of performance while being really efficient. We also have four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM as standard, but TerraMaster was nice enough to send us an extra four gigabyte upgrade module to bring this NAS up to eight gigabytes, which should really help to make sure that we can get the most out of this unit running different pieces of software. It also has some really surprising features given the price point, like these dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports on the back, which is already pretty darn fast on its own, but if you have a router or switch that supports link aggregation, TerraMaster claims you can get a full five gigabit connection to and from this NAS, which is way overkill for just streaming movies. But if you like to edit video or use your NAS for business, for example, like we do, it's a very welcome feature. This NAS also has two M.2 NVMe SSD slots. So if you want to install some solid state drives to use for caching internal file transfers, you can put them in right here and get a nice little speed boost. But most of you probably won't have to worry about that. And of course, on the front, you get these four toolless swappable SATA hard drive base, which will each accept up to a 20 terabyte hard drive. So you can get up to 80 terabytes of storage in one of these little boxes. Uh, by the way, if you need some hard drives, go ahead and check the link down in the description with some of our recommendations. With a NAS like this, you could easily get some six or eight terabyte drives and still have a huge amount of storage at a really good price per terabyte. Overall, I think that this is a really nice looking NAS as well. It has this premium anodized aluminum panel wrapping around the sides here. And I also feel like the TerraMaster logo is really familiar to me somehow, but I can't quite put a finger on why that is. The F4223 is also very compact and quiet given the maximum storage capacity. Here it is in our server closet, and as you can see, it's the smallest unit in there by a wide margin, which is actually really nice because if you want to just leave this next to your router out in the open, it won't be all that intrusive. And that's pretty much it for the actual NAS itself. So at this point, we went ahead and installed a few hard drives so we could actually get started with the software setup. TerraMaster has developed their own operating system and web interface for their NASs, which they call TOS, and it offers a pretty standard interface for managing the settings of your NAS. You can install other operating system software on the TerraMaster pretty easily, but for this video, we figured that we should go ahead and see what TOS has to offer, since the latest update has apparently brought a lot of improvements to the user experience. All we had to do to get started was plug the NAS into power and give it an ethernet network connection. And from there, we could use the built-in setup page from a web browser to download and install TOS. Uh, if you need to find the TerraMaster on your network, you can use the free TNAS PC app, which will just automatically find the NAS on your network and take you to the setup page, which makes for a very user-friendly setup process. The whole configuration took about 10 minutes and all we really had to do was click a couple of buttons and give it a username and password so we could access the NAS setup software. So as far as ease of use goes, the TerraMaster is definitely scoring some points here. After this, our unit automatically configured our hard drives in a setup called TerraMaster T-RAID to distribute our data across each drive. 
This is actually pretty cool since it allows you to mix and match hard drives and get the most space possible. So it's pretty similar in concept to something like Synology SHR, which we use on our personal NAS to make our RAID array as flexible and upgradable as possible. In case you're not aware, when you store your data across multiple hard drives in a NAS like this, you need to decide how all of that data is actually gonna be stored across the drives. The industry standard solution for this is to set up the drives in a RAID or a redundant array of independent disks. This is where each file is broken down into chunks and equally distributed across your drives, which offers a really good balance of performance and reliability. With a RAID, you can set an amount of one or more hard drives to be used for redundancy, which means that you will lose that amount of space set aside for redundancy, but in return, if any one of your hard drives die, the NAS can automatically map the rest of your drives in a way that will prevent data loss. And since hard drives are really fragile pieces of hardware that can just be prone to random failure without warning, we will always recommend the use of a RAID over a system that does not feature redundancy, like a JBOD, for example. So the fact that the TerraMaster configures this automatically was really nice to see. Overall, we really liked the experience of using the TOS interface. It definitely draws some inspiration from other NAS UIs on the market, but the features that it offers make everything feel complete. It gives you everything from a software store to support for IP security cameras and real-time backup for different storage volumes, so you can ensure the best data protection and integrity. I'm not gonna dive into the specifics of setting up this NAS as I feel like that's a little outside the scope of this video, but TOS makes it pretty easy to create new network shares, install software, and manage the security of your NAS without ever having to type in text commands, which I think is pretty important for a lot of people from an ease of use standpoint. But of course, considering what our channel here is actually about, our biggest interest was testing out the ability to stream movies and TV shows over the network. Thankfully, TerraMaster supports a lot of different in-home streaming softwares, and of course our favorite is Plex, since that's where we have all of our movies right now. But if you want to make a simple DLNA share or use something like Jellyfin, both of those are readily supported as well. In the case of Plex though, all we had to do was install it using the built-in software center and sign into our Plex account. And once we set up our libraries and copied some movies onto the NAS, we could actually get to testing. So for playing back those movie rips we put on the NAS, which we made using this Pioneer 4K Blu-ray drive, we'll be using our Sony X900H and its built-in Android TV interface so we can see whether or not features like HDR will actually work. We always prefer to directly play the uncompressed movie rips over Plex to get the best quality for both 1080p and 4K Blu-ray rips. And doing this, the TerraMaster had no problem. We didn't experience any stuttering or slowdowns in the playback of several different movies, and we'd say it worked just about as well as our Synology unit. And of course, all of the original features of the disc, like the uncompressed Atmos audio and HDR10, made their way through just fine, and the Plex interface itself was pretty snappy, which was good to see. So with all that being said, we were really happy with the features and performance of the TerraMaster F4223 NAS. It offers everything that you need in a basic and robust mass storage solution without going overboard, and that makes the whole system very easy to set up and use. If you're interested in checking out the F4223, I'll be sure to leave links to TerraMaster's website as well as Amazon, where you can go ahead and learn more about this specific model and any of the other NAS devices that TerraMaster sells on their store. And with that, I think I'm just about done here. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.